Hi, welcome to the uh, corn segment at Verrill Farm. Today, again, we're here with the farmer's farmer, Steve Verrill, for this farm to table segment. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have some absolute and one of our Mirai varieties. Me, uh, say that again? Mirai. Mirai. Uh, yeah, that's uh, um, a newer innovation. Uh, from hybridizing. It's got more of the sugary genes in it, so it's a little sweeter corn. It has a little uh, darker yellow kernel usually. Usually a little tougher kernel, but some of these varieties we have don't. Right. And this is absolute, uh, not the one out of the bottle, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a very, very nice corn. Right. That was Great. a joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we can see that uh, each strand of silk is connected to a separate kernel of corn. Wow. And that's how each kernel gets pollinated. And if, in fact, the kernel didn't get pollinated, it won't develop. And that's, you might see that occasionally. It'll look like there's a, just a kernel missing on the ear of corn. Right. And that's when that strand didn't get pollinated. So that has a, a, a a purpose to really develop the ear of corn. Well, as well as uh, uh, get the genetics for that's how you'd hybridize or, or uh, fertilize either one. Wow. And I don't know how successful I'm going to be here, but I think it looks good so far. Yeah. I was wondering why. Usually I'm just grabbing... Yeah, yank it right off. Yes. But you're going to give us a lesson. Wow. Look oh, at that. I don't know how that's going to show up, but you can experiment with some at home. They break off quite easily. Yeah. And if you notice, they're off the bottom of the ear already, but yeah. not off the upper part. Right. And that's the way the ear matures. It's kind of interesting. We eat a lot of corn in the field when we're sampling different blocks to see which one to pick next and how soon it has to be picked or yeah. whether it's ready. And the sweetness actually starts at the base of the ear. Uh -huh and over a day or two, works its way to the tip. Uh -huh. And as soon as it gets to the tip, the next day it'll start to leave the base. So there's just that, that, that narrow time there where you got the flavor on the whole ear. But I think you can see pretty well wow. maybe that That's each kernel has a strand of silk attached to it. Wow. That's very interesting. And this corn's unusual that way because uh, um, the pollinization or the genes in the pollen affect the appearance and the flavor of this kernel of corn, not just the plant that's going to grow if you were to plant this kernel. Mm -hmm. And that means that when we grow different varieties, they have to be isolated from one another so they won't cross-pollinate. Really? If you were to uh, plant a nice-tasting white corn next to a nice-tasting yellow corn, and they had the same number of maturity days, the ears would be yellow and white. Oh, but they I've wouldn't necessarily, that. would well, they wouldn't be good tasting ears necessarily because right. it wouldn't be a, 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 a hybrid that had been developed from specific parents. Now when you're tasting out in the field, are you tasting at the top or the bottom? Both. We do both ends. Both ends. And I notice you're not very good at sharing, so I'm going to rely you on you. You notice that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this one is called Mi Rai. Right. Well, you told a great joke about this particular one, was it called Absolute. Right. And you said it's not the, or, it doesn't come out of a bottle, <laughs> right? Right. So I wanted to re have a rebuttal. Mi Rai Khan. Me like corn. Oh. How was that? Weak? Corny. <laughs> okay, folks. <laughs> All right, Steve. So I noticed you peeled some corn here. What are we uh, going to show here? Well, these are all ears of Mirai picked out of the same block at the same time. And uh, there's quite a difference in maturity as you go from one side to the other. Um, when the fellows are picking corn, they just by feeling the tip of the ear and how full it is, right in there is this decision whether to pick it or not pick it. 
Oh. And they get it right pretty much 100% of the time, but this one right here is just a little bit too young. Mm. And that's why I, I don't mind at all if people open the corn and take a look at it before they buy it to make sure it's the way they like it, because uh, on these other two, this is the way I like it. Yeah. But my wife likes it like this a little bit, more, mm. more mature, a little heavier ear. And uh, that's fine, we have something for everybody. Right. But these, these are a little, a little sweeter. These kernels are a little bit harder. They look glossier, I think, than the other ear right. did. Yeah, they do. And uh, that's the nature of that. So this is still sweet. Right. This is more mature. So it's losing its sweetness at the bottom. Probably so. You okay. want to check them and see? Sure. <laughs> I, I didn't think you were going to ask. Okay, so. I got to tell you, that is like sugar. Mm. Might be the same both ends. Won't be for long. It's, it, for some reason, it tastes sweeter at the bottom on the mature. Well, that's... These varieties are the sweetest when they're more mature mm -hmm. than uh, the absolute is. No? I mean, it's so flavorful <laughs> and, r and really full flavored that... Doesn't need cooking. Right. right? <laughs> well, I want to say, uh, Steve, that just eating these corn niblets raw, they don't need anything. Don't need salt, pepper, butter. And truthfully, it's what I've been used to. You cook the corn, yeah. but you don't have to. Well, another thing, uh, if you get a bunch of corn, take it home and decide you cooked a few more than you want to eat, or if you don't think you're going to cook them all, it's good to cook it all right when it's fresh. And then any you don't eat that night, just take a knife and cut the kernels off and put them in a plastic bag or a right. cup, Tupperware container and stick it in the freezer. And uh, that you'll be surprised how much better that tastes than any commercially frozen corn you buy. Really? Really is good. Wow. And that's another great tip. So if you buy too many years of corn or you're having a cookout and you wind up with 10 years of corn, cut those kernels off, right. put it in a Ziploc and freeze it, and you're going to have... And flash put it in frozen. A dish or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Chowder, anything you want to do with it. Right. Well, on behalf of the Chef's Table Foundation, we're really pleased to have the support of Mr. Steve Vero from Vero Farm and doing this farm to table segment. And we want to thank you. And this has been really a very informative segment. Oh, you're very welcome. It's been thank fun. Thank you. Excellent.